Yeah, we good got morning, a, everybody. We got a fun looking week. Yeah. Looks like a sturdy dominance. Maybe it was overblown. Or maybe it's just because there were no big tournaments this weekend. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, Elite's going down to five models. I feel significantly less like that's probably going to happen. Maybe people are uh, figuring it out, actually having a plan here. Yeah, interestingly enough, there was a pretty large tournament with reasonably high player skill for this week. There was the Danish Nationals. So out in Denmark, they had a 24-player tournament, which sounds like it was probably all players who did well locally, or they have maybe they had their own circuit, or maybe ITC. Not really sure how they did that. But the winner of that tournament, Void Dancer Troop. And a surprising team with pretty good stats for this week. Void Dancer Troop looks sick, honestly. Um, they jump around, I mean, depending on how climbing down works, if they can climb down, like, Void Dancers are back in business, kids, because zip around, so much AP2, like, your Shadow Seer can essentially ignore obscuring, zap people's brains. Um, you can also drop a portable barricade with your Death Jester and just have it be a miserable 3-up save with an invuln that's just nailing people, ignoring piercing. Pretty annoying. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty solid. Uh, Void Dancer Troops, pretty bananas. I didn't even look at their stats yet. Um... Oh, they're like yeah, I, just I barely through... in the blue at the very top. Correct. I think actually this, I did these a little early, the ones that we're talking about right now. The actual stats, once I trimmed out all the league data for the week, is actually about a 61% win rate, with their average loss being the third point five game. So they had a fully undefeated tournament uh, with a three three fin three round finish, a bunch of two round loses in the finals, and then at the Danish Nationals they also lost in the finals, but still placed first because they I think their tiebreakers were the best. And both of first and second had losses. So Void Dancers versus Novitiates was the final match. It looks like, and it looks like Novitiates took the win there unsurprising novitiates are absolute insanity for anyone that hasn't caught up on that um the the chart kind of shows it what's the percentage on this uh they had a 83 percent win rate so actually higher than what this shows because i trimmed out three leagues that just have no data on them so they actually ended up uh, crazy high which you know, I think there is an argument that I could see floated that if you've never played against Novitiates, you don't know what it's like until you play against them. Yeah, I think Novitiates is the most dire thing that's happened in the history of Kill Team. I think they're, like, worse than peak cults. I think they're worse than anything that's ever happened to Kill Team. They're absolutely insane, and 83% uh, does not surprise me at all. And we got Yeah, they do have the knowledge check where when the first game that you play against Novitiates, if you've never seen them, you will just like, oh, I just tried to do stuff. You like put yourself in a weird position to do a fight or a shoot. Nothing happens. And then you just, you just get killed because they, they do have good enough guns to threaten most things. Maybe not quite elites, but they can just stage. And they do have two or three models that can just kill in a sturdy outright. Maybe taking four or five in the process, but four or five in the process is not enough it, to get what you need done against. Yeah, it's a totally fine and dandy trade. And like they're they're shooting like the crossbow with with faith points. You just like auto kill stuff that you shoot. It's bananas. Um, your the flamethrowers are absolute insanity, and they will just like cook cook somebody. Like space marines get wrecked. Like get out of town. Um, they, they hit like a truck, they're tankier than, like, Warp Coven, which is insanity, uh, they've got tons of operatives, and, uh, they're bananas. Watch out. Yeah, they are bananas. Meanwhile, and another big surprise, we got a Farstalker Kinban 3-0 finish out in Victory Gamers, Kill Team RTT, which is what? down in the DC area. Ryan Wilfong, Gellopox's biggest fanboys, switched over to Farstalker Kinban oh, with Ryan a 3-0 finish, Farstalker? beating Legionary in the finals. Oh my goodness. Uh, do, you, do you see, like, a breakdown of that score at all? Is that possible? Uh, I can look at it. I think it's tell me he got tell me he just through. maxed out the he, kill he op. Just, he he did a twenty one and he did a crit ops, so he just maxed out all his points. Wait, he maxed out, so that means he tabled he tabled the legionary with far stalkers. He did table the legionary. What? I don't really know if that <laughs> makes a ton of sense conceptually. Like just like the raw power of that matchup does seem a little crazy. So I do wonder what happened in that game. 
it might be that you know the legionary player liam g also a former world championship attendee popped all of his ploys and orion was able to back off and just play the mission kind of coyly Maybe he's playing infiltration. Probably not, because he had to do kill ops. So he probably playing recon. So probably recover item or not. Table probably, recover, anyways. probably confirm kill. Because there are a handful of models on the far soccer kinmen that can get a kill on a legionary, especially if you pair up and do some work. Like a dog going in lets your lets your big gun get relentless, basically guaranteeing a kill on the legionary even through Nurgle. There's definitely a couple ways to do it. So it's, it's an interesting result. I wonder if anyone was there and wants to talk about that game and knows what happened. We'd love to hear about it. Maybe even, like, Orion pop on and spill the beans. Yeah. As far as uh, some other big changes, you know, we talked about Blades of Cain on this Monday's show a little bit because Jason's been noodling around with it. It's pretty well this weekend, so it might be that the time for the elves is back. Maybe... The eight elves are just at the right melee points where they can fight with the legionary menaces and warp coven menaces at about even. And then they get a couple extra models to go do stuff with. And then against all the small guys, now with the new counteract, when you go and get a kill, you can still counteract. So you're not like completely dead in the water. Yeah, Blades of Cain, they've got some spicy flavors going on. Uh, you played a little three rounder this weekend, right? I played a little three-rounder. I played, and I also played Legionary yesterday, actually, in a practice game. So Blades of Cain this weekend, my one loss was to Angels of Death, but I was not, I think I probably just needed to play another game or two with them in that matchup to have a feel for what I want to do. Yeah. That was my second game with Blades of Cain in this edition. So, yeah, and I think probably like my seventh game totally. So I just made a couple misplays. I had some pretty nail-biting games against... Brood Brothers, so being able to strike on death definitely presented some problems for a heavy Howling Banshee skew where I'm trying to jump in and get a kill because if they get a crit and they slap me for four, it makes all my other breakpoints much, much worse. Yeah, that's pretty rough. Yeah, in general, Blades of Cain is like one of those ones. I feel like you have to like, you have to play like at least five games before you to like step into all of the traps that that like you're going to fall for. And then like once you've played a bunch of games you can kind of figure out what you got to do because it, it is such a different like especially all banshees is such a like crazy different thing to do um yeah. so i did reasonably well uh first round was against hand of the archon which i misplayed my ceaseless rerolls and just gave myself no melee rerolls for the entire game so that was that was a big oops on my part so I could have done that better, but I did win against Hand of the Archon, and then I lost to Angels of Death in a game that probably was winnable had I done things properly, and then I would have had to play against Warp Coven, which, meh, I don't know. Or, but I played against Brood Brothers in the final round, so I was part of that 56%. They do seem pretty fun. They do seem like they have tools to interact with the elites, just because you have a couple girls or a couple guys, depending on if you're doing Striking Scorpions or Dire Avengers, that can do a little bit of work. Uh, meanwhile, you know, a lot of teams out in the 55, so there are a couple big losers where it looks like all of the win rate is getting sucked up by. Because this week, compared to last week, the elites have definitely leveled off. Whether it's new players coming in and kind of pushing the win rate down, which is possible, or people just slowly learning that running headfirst into a wall of ceramite is not what you want to do. Hard to know. But it does look like Veteran Guard, Commandos, Brood Brothers, Scout Squad, Wormblade, Castrican, and Vespid Stingwing, Exaction Squad, and Pathfinders. Basically, the teams with not a lot of ability to do melee or very squishy game plans have not been doing all that well. So the Legionaries and the Astartes are keeping them in check while the, while the Elves are kind of running amok. Yeah, um, Scout Squad, Pathfinders really struggling i'm a little surprised on the scout squad but i mean i guess everyone probably built the heavy weapons and i think the heavy weapons are awful like they're just they're terrible like don't drop the heavy weapons 100 percent of the time you only got nine operatives you don't really have time to leave a dude standing around especially when your opponents are three apl operatives that can get into melee and just pull you in half yeah you, you gotta like drop those heavy weapons and take knives or something um and yeah that's Maybe that'll help. Um, but Pathfinders, that that seems like a rough time to find to be finding paths out there. I think it's not 
really all that surprising. Pathfinder's in a rough spot because their biggest, they're generally their biggest target is going to be elites, and right now the two best elite teams just ignore their gimmick, which is that I drop you in armor, I shoot you with accurate two with a reroll, and I pray that that's enough to kill you, which is not generally a good plan. Yeah. Yep. That's Vespid rough. Sting Wings and Tempestus Aquans definitely running into some issues so vespids doing much worse probably fully unable to play any their recon to archetype just because there's no ability for them to spend apl without burning other resources which sucks and then tempestus aquan doing okay there was a 3-0 result in spain at a 20 person event where novitiates and tempestus aquilons placed in the top end with Whoa. second place's novitiates wallace w from the world championships top eight last year making it in as the number two for novitiates so novitiates definitely seeing a big resurgence in a big way which is altogether not that surprising knowing how good they are right now and legionnaire kind of dropping down a little bit so maybe maybe it's fine maybe they don't need to be changed except for the part where there were 27 players and there were six undefeated players this week for legionary yeah i feel Which like legionary does not bode well for overall balance they really can just kind of uh, stat check people um but they're they're like they're weirdly honest it's just like crazy stat check it's it's like the play style i was doing all last edition but like super souped up with yeah, way better stats and 24 players only two with undefeated records so warp coven definitely a lot more room for pilot error Phobos strike team near and dear to Jason's heart. 11 players with two undefeated records. Pretty good as far as the elites go. And then the last, the Angels of Death, our boys in blue, or, you know, other colors, have not been doing all that well, even though they're quite popular. 27 players, two undefeateds. Yeah, just like a popular, fun faction. Everyone's got intercessors, the poster boys, you know, like, there's going to be a lot of people, like, dabbling in the game and getting wrecked by veterans. So I assume... Yeah. And they're also just far, far more honest than the chaotic variants. So I think that honesty definitely hurts them quite a bit. Nemesis Claw, the last of our big elite boys, explicitly Astartes Elite, 21 players, three undefeateds. So again, a better conversion rate than Angels of Death. So Angels of Death, definitely the worst of the Astartes tier kill teams right now. And then Higher Tech did not do as well this weekend, you know, only with a 50% win rate, not the near 60 of last week. Two undefeated records, 11 players, so still pretty good there. Inquisitorial Agents, a uh, big big bad boogeyman that everyone keeps talking about. Zero undefeated records, so does take a lot of work to get everything going. Fours to hit and threes to hit in shooting. Maybe not the best when your opponents can just stop those ploys from going off. Um, one real quick thing I want to shout out. Uh, Nemesis Claws in Midnight Clad works when you have an engage order now. Just wanted to yep. shout that out. I, I hadn't, like, initially noticed that. That is very, very good and very, very cool. Yeah, you can just stand out there, cloaked in shadow, shooting away, as long as nobody blitzes a dude within six inches of you to pop the shade. And if they do, then you just gobble them up with the skin thief or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty neat. Yeah, it's a pretty interesting week because I think a lot of the fears of the metagame are everyone talking about elites, but it does seem like that for as good as the elites are, there are definitely answers floating around out there. It might not be to play the squishy human teams that don't have the ability to crack your armor. Um, yeah, that and like it looks like it's working that well. Amazingly, the only like problematically high winning factions are Blooded, what, and Novitiates. To be fair, Blooded only had three players worth of representation this week, just barely enough to make it in the stats, and they did have two undefeated, but one of those is named Torneo Casual Halloween, which to me reads maybe not the most serious, and then Welcome to the New Edition, which again doesn't read like the most serious. 18 players there in the Netherlands, with Jorni getting third out of 18 with a 3 0 record, along with two other players, which were Phobos Strike Team and Nemesis Claw. So, new edition, new group, probably not the best result as far as, you know, big, big results go. And then Torneo Casual Kill Team, 28 players with, three, uh, with a 3 0 record, or a 2 0 1 record. So, maybe there's some room in Chile. Chile's got a couple diehard blooded players, or Latin America has a lot of diehard blooded players. Ratman, shout out to Ratman from Argentina. So, oops. Isn't the meta still kind of undecided as much as people are clamoring for change maybe it'll be fine in three weeks after people just learn how to play the game it'll also be very interesting to see how this all shakes out at worlds 
That's true. World is just around the corner, and you've got a ticket, so in two weeks, you'll be competing against the best. Uh, you know, and shout out to our listeners or our, you know, our Patreon subscribers. Uh, shout out to our new two Patreon subscribers. Thank you guys for joining and helping to support us. Jason, you want to give them a preview of uh, what's to come? For for Worlds? Yeah. Um, Man, I'm I'm doing this awful thing to myself where I'm having a lot of fun with Blades of Cain. Uh, but I have so much more experience with Phobos, I think I'm probably just going to do Phobos. And uh, it's Omni Scramble City. Um, finally kind of, like, not skewing, um, I've got, like, I've got a core three that I always bring, it's the, uh, Omni Scramble, the, the Box Breaker guy, because you can Omni Scramble through walls, the comms, because he makes your CP super efficient, and the Incursor Marksman, because obviously he hits like a truck and just has crazy board control powers, and then the sergeant and two warriors is also a must take, I'm like two warriors you have to for free mission actions, and then any kind of like flex there is great, like all the choices amazing, uh, really can't go wrong, there is stuff that is like I think a little bit more helpful, I think like warp coven I gotta do a little more reaver heavy, nemesis claw probably a little more incursor heavy, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a very dynamic, interesting... Finally, Phobos feels like the right way to play is actually sneaky. Yeah, I mean, I think Phobos, you did well with them. You did... You were up there. So, I think that the World Championships, if it's going to be the terrain types that everyone expects, which is probably not Beta Decima, I think that's what everyone is expecting. I've never seen Beta Decima at a GW event, so I'd be very surprised if they somehow managed to rustle up enough copies especially for one of the largest kill team tournaments in the world. I think they've mentioned it's going to be upwards of like 80 plus players and it was 38 last year. So this is going to be one of the biggest tournaments and we'll see how it goes. Yeah. And we'll, since we'll both be there in some capacity, we'll have a uh, live recordings from just another kill team podcast. Yes. It should be very exciting. All right. Well, guys, thanks for hanging out with us for the weekly stat show. Uh, if you've got any big tips for how you are beating space marines or struggling against space marines you know come by and talk to us a bit because the stats say there's still a window there's still a golden path thanks for listening to the end see you again soon <laughs>